My name is Kirk Smith. I'm the Montana, I'm a, with Montana State Fund as the Safety Services Specialist, and I'd like to welcome you to our March workshop entitled Set Your Safety Programs in Motion. Uh, the two topics we picked for today, these are topics that uh, we had a couple people say that they would like to have. One of them was Vehicle Operator Safety Program, which was kind of a mouthful, but trying to avoid conflict with like the National Safety Council, which has defensive driving, and a couple other people had their there are different types of training out there for that, so I kind of put this long term in there for just basically a vehicle safety program and how you work with your operators on that. Uh, companies that have attended our course have a tendency to drop in their loss costs, which is kind of a good thing. And so um, we have actually started doing something a little different the last two years, and that was all for that 5% discount for the first year after you guys graduate. So. Uh, if anyone's interested in that WorkSafe Champions, let me know. But one of the things we've done is we've changed the course a little bit in the fact that we require them to do an assessment of their workplace. We ask them to put it into a safety action plan and then to graduate they have to show movement on that plan. And so that's kind of where kind of the thought process came out was this was a really good time that we could just kind of talk about what's involved in a safety action plan and I think that you guys will really enjoy both of these topics today, okay? You know, one of the things that happened when I put this thing together is that anytime I pick a topic, I start paying it, then it seems like all these other things start pinging off of me a little bit, different ideas and stuff. So the first day I was gonna do this, I actually had a situation in which I was coming to work, you know, I was going to the first presentation actually is what it was, and I was headed south on I-15 and I was going to take the Capitol Hill exit. And of course, you know, I don't get, it's not like the SMCs, the, our safety management consultants. They're assigned a car. Every, every quarter I drive for just a month. So they don't assign me a car for the rest of the quarter. So what it is is that I then, through the motor pool, I get a particular car. And it's a different car each time. So this particular car I got, the brakes are a little bit different. So I'm driving a 1992 uh, Toyota Camry is my normal little car. It's a little beater that I drive back and forth to work. Well, the, it, things work, brakes work, and everything else like that. But you can imagine the brakes are probably a little bit different than driving something that's fairly new. So I'm driving a Ford Fusion, and the brakes are a little bit more touchy. And of course, then, you know, over the weekend, right before we did that uh, class, the roads got a little bit worse, and so they were a little bit icy and slushy and all kinds of other fun things. So I'm driving and I'm going to take the Capitol Hill exit and as I went to pull over in that lane I got over okay and everything else like that but just as I did this car went past me about 75 plus miles an hour okay. They got up and all of a sudden they got about two cars up in front of me and they decided they wanted the Capitol Hill exit. So you can imagine what happens next right. They decide to pull over in the lane. The two, ca two cars in front of me decides to almost come to a complete stop in the middle of the interstate. Of course, then of course, that makes me step on my brakes. Now all of a sudden I'm hoping like heck that I don't have an accident going to the first uh, training class. But it just kind of raised that awareness issue for you, if you will, as to all the other things that kind of happen to us as we're... Uh, all right, I'm going to close the door for just a minute, but all the things that happen to us when we're driving, okay? So I think it's important to kind of think about these things as we start talking about all the things that happen within driving. So one of the thing, other things that I did was I didn't want to go just through and quote the DOT regulations. I wanted to put it out there because there's a lot of folks that don't fall under DOT. So I wanted to just kind of present this as, these are things that I think should be in a safety program that I think that you guys need to address. Now, if you address these, most of these things you will want, you'll be addressing already with the DOT regulations, okay? But I think it's important to have that discussion. So, first of all, I'm going to just talk about, you know, the facts. And the facts are, we kill somewhere between 30 and 40,000 people a year on our nation's highways. That's quite a few people that we lose every year driving on, on our roads, okay? Most are killed within 20 to 25 miles of home. Why do you think that is? Yeah, you're a little bit more familiar with that. You're more comfortable with it, I think. 
I, yeah, I would say that, that most of it's done there in that, in that range. I know there's people that live out in smaller communities, um, but generally there's a lot more traffic within 20, 25 miles of home, isn't there, where we normally do our driving? Some of us are lucky enough to get out on the interstate and have kind of some open space to drive in, but most of us, we're kind of in different communities. And even if you're driving on the interstate, eventually you have to come off of the interstate and you're going to be driving into those more congested areas. But I think that there's also a point when we kind of let our guard down because of that familiarity, because this is where we, you know, this is where we're at with things. One of the things that drives me crazy is my father-in-law lives in Deer Lodge, and he decides he's not going to wear a seatbelt because nothing's going to bad going to happen to him in Deer Lodge. It's a small community, you know. I don't need to wear. Now, when he goes on the interstate or he gets on the highway, he'll put on a seatbelt, but he won't do it in town. But yet, that's where the accidents are. A lot of the accidents are happening. So I, I think that that's important as well. Now, that other discussion up here with accidents is that this is kind of as a safety person. This is really what we have problems with because the word accident. If you think of the word accident, it generally means what? An uncontrolled event. Unintentional. You didn't mean for this to happen. They're unpreventable. And so really, when you think about it, a true accident are really rare. Because you know, if you're driving, now what's the speed limit in Montana real quick? On the interstate. You're saying 65, 75, 65 for trucks, 75, but that's not necessarily true either, is it? Because you guys know that you are not going to get a ticket until you go five miles over that. So the true speed limit is, no, then we go back to it depends on the road condition. <laughs> So it really kind of takes into play. But if you're driving 75 and the roads are really icy and snowy and stuff, so what's the thought pattern? You know, well, okay, are you really surprised when that turns into an incident or an accident then? And when you're driving over the speed limit like that? So you ha kind of have to take into, into consideration that in most cases, the driver should have done something or shouldn't have done something, and that led to the accident, okay? So that's kind of a thought process. In your lifetime, you're going to lose a coworker, a friend, or a family member to a vehicle collision. And I can already think of some people being, I'm not that old, but I mean, you know, that I can think of different people during my lifetime that we've lost due to a vehicle accident. So there are some things to think about in this process, okay? In Montana, in 2013, we killed 227 people on our roads. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea that we do have a little bit of an exposure here. In 2012, we, uh, out of 34 occupational fatalities, we had 13 that were transportation related. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but normally in the state of Montana, we usually lose about 49 to 50 people and occupational fatalities, okay, or occupational injury or um, incidents. So we're actually down in 2012. So we'll see how we did in 2013, okay. But that's over a third of <clears throat> those situations. Hi, come on in. Um, that were involved that were transportation related. So that indicates to us that we do have an occupational exposure here that we should probably be paying attention to. Also in 2012, we had 100 injuries that involved uh, transportation-related type stuff, okay? So we need to take this into account when we go forward, we start to think about this, that we do have exposures as far as occupationally. It's just not going out there for the Sunday drive or our normal drive back and forth to work, but it's also those other situations in which we have people doing uh, things for us that they're out there doing uh, either in a company vehicle or whatever, we do have exposure. So the thing I would tell you that you need to do is take a look at where you're spending your, where, what happens during an accident. And one of the things that I would tell you is that direct costs versus indirect costs. So if you look at it for every direct cost, every dollar you spend on a direct cost, you are generally spending four to $10 more than that on indirect costs, okay? 
So when you think about this, think about the insurance part of this, okay? For the premiums, how many insurances do you have during a vehicle accident if it's occupational related? Work comp and your insurance, right? Your vehicle insurance. So if you're a company or an organization, you have two exposures there as far as premium exposure. Once you have that, you know that's in a climb. That you, you know, the more that you have in that particular way, there's going to be exposure there. And one of the thoughts that you have when you, when you think about someone that's, um, even if it's not their fault and the other insurance pays somewhat, it still goes against your work comp rates. So it's still going to have be a premium increase in that, in that way. There's vehicle repair, there's deductibles. The vehicle replacement, you guys know as well as I do, if you have a car and it's a couple years old, you're not going to get, the insurance company will not pay what that vehicle is actually worth. You're going to have some extra distance you'll have to make up to, to replace that vehicle. Okay? There's fines, there's damage, there's uh, the damage load, there's medical billing that all goes into that. But those indirect costs are the things that are going to catch you because if you look at it, you're going to have civil litigation. So if you involve anybody in the general public, they're going to go out and get a lawyer and because of your organization, they realize that there's some deep pockets out there maybe. So you're going to end up in some kind of civil litigation. You're also going to have to have time to investigate to take a look and see what happened and try and find that root cause. You're going to find that you're also going to have lower employee morale during this process as well because somebody got hurt, it was a friend, now they have to pick up the pace for the missing person. There's some other things you bring in, even if you have a well-oiled team that's really working well together, all you have to do is change out personalities and you can see that you're going to have some, uh, some changes there. Okay, Lower customer satisfaction, you're going to have unwanted media attention. You guys spend a lot of time trying to get your organization's name out there in the most positive light, right? What do you think happens when you have a vehicle accident and it goes on the news? What do they announce? Where that person works, right? And they do it every time they bring the topic up. So you may make two or three news cycles. Anytime there's an update or something like that, it's going to have some unwanted media attention. So there are some things that you're going to have to overcome that way. Of course, you're going to have government involvement because they're going to do the investigation because it's either the city, county, or the highway patrol that's going to be out there doing the investigation. You also have some training time and some job skills lost. And so replacing that time, training somebody else, these are all indirect costs but you're going to spend more doing that than you will for those direct costs. Okay? So the one thing you want to do is assess your situation. You want to take a look at your operations, your procedures, and you want to take a look and see what your exposure is. This is important that you guys do this, that you take a look at it and see what do you guys need to do a little bit different. You know, what, what, what kind of exposures do we have rather?